So, um, just watched the first episode, sorry, chapter of Doctor Who Flux, The Halloween Apocalypse. That was pretty good, that, initial thoughts. Um, that is probably Chibnall's, oh, I wouldn't say best script, but yeah, one of the best scripts that he's done so far. And probably the best script of the Chibnall era. As, no, that's not true. Rosa was better than that. Obviously, um, a lot of the plot lines have been just set up. So this is just them starting, setting them up. So, of course, we didn't get anything definitive. And, of course, at the end of the episode, we have all of the plot lines that have been put in, like the stuff in 19, 1820 Liverpool, the Santarans, which are going to appear in Chapter 2 in the Santaran War, uh, the Swarm... Uh, what else was there? Oh, yeah, the Weeping Angel stuff. Of course, that was at the end of the episode, and we'll probably be seeing more of that over the next five chapters. Um, let's start off with the cold opening. That was absolutely fantastic. That, after a year and a bit of having no Doctor Who, has really brought me straight back into it. Just the humour of it, and the sheer ridiculousness of the Doctor and Yaz hanging upside down in shackles over a... <laughs> with 78 seconds to get out of a pit of acid on a planet that's probably about to explode. I mean, it's just fantastic. It's brilliant. Uh, the title sequence has changed. They've added Flux underneath Doctor Who. And then, of course, we have probably the main character of sorts. Uh, well, not main character, but he's sort of a twist villain, not villain, being Carvanista. Carvanista, who's actually... They really did hammered up with the Star Wars stuff, like, they acknowledged, yes, he looks a lot like a Wookiee, so we will pretend to do the Jedi mind trick stuff. That was good. Carvanista being a trick, sort of, tr tr uh, twist hero of sorts, that was uh, pretty interesting, actually. Yeah. The fact that each seven billion ships kind of let me off to the fact that, yeah, there's something going on here. Why is there one ship per person? Though I think there's about eight billion people on the planet by now, but... I'm not counting you. <laughs> um, we had that woman, Claire, who showed up. Claire, who got set up by the Weeping Angel. I didn't think that they'd reveal the Weeping Angels this early, actually. Um, I'm good. I'm glad that it wasn't a, you know, the Weeping Angels are back. It's sort of a, yeah, the Weeping Angels are back, but for what purpose? It was like more of a tease than a full reveal for them. Especially also who, who Claire is, because we'll obviously find that later on. Cause she says, oh yeah, I'm from your past. You haven't met me yet. And then she has some really strange behaviour where she's talking to herself about going home and whatnot. It was a bit weird. Um, Dan. Yes, Dan. New companion, Dan. Dan is... he's actually quite funny. He's pretty brilliant. I find him a bit like um, Nardole in a way, the comic relief of the series. And I think he will graft him really well with the TARDIS team. He'll fit in perfectly. Especially with his interactions with Yaz where it's Sheffield versus Liverpool. I'm not into football, but yeah, it's a nice thing to see, have football banter. Uh, Santarans! Ooh, that redesign. That looks really good. It's more faithful to the original Santarans from the 70s. John Pertwee, the Time Warrior, they look pretty much the exact same. Looks a lot like Lynx. Um, I can't wait to see what the Santarans do next uh, Sunday. Honesty, uh, I've got quite a few hopes if you saw the next time trailer. British Army versus the Santarans. I'm pretty sure we all know who gonna, who's going to win, and it's probably not the British. <laughs> um, what the next thing? The Division are back. Uh, the Division introduced last series, the CIA, Celestial Intervention Agency. Division are pretty awesome. Uh, it was good to see them return, because when they showed up uh, having Swarm in prison, I thought, I recognise that gun from somewhere. And I immediately thought back to Joe Martin threatening that Division member. And I think it's good to see that the Division are actually getting more clarity over them, because at the end of Series 12 with the Timeless Children, it was like, oh, okay, the Doctor's got a past with the Division. Who are they, and what's going on here? <laughs> so it's good to see that we're actually getting that expanded a bit. Um, what's next? Ah, yes, the main villain, the Swarm, and his sister. Yeah, that's pretty cool. They reminded me a bit of Eldrad. I mean, they're probably not the same species or anything related to Eldrad, but they were quite similar with the whole crystal thing. And they were quite threatening, actually. They were quite, I wouldn't say scary, but they're quite frightening in a way. Because if you look at them, ooh, the whole skull imagery, 
just them having the crystals all over them and being able to kill people without even touching them. I mean, that's insane. Yeah, they look fantastic. Of course, there was the thing about the couple in the Arctic Circle. That didn't really make sense. I hope that they expand on that later, which they probably will. Uh, and of course, with the woman being his sister, or Long, and her wanting Diane, who is um, not Dan's girlfriend, is love interest, I guess you could say. That's probably what's going to be happening. Yeah, she was quite interested in that for some reason. I guess we'll find out later. And of course, the big thing, which is the namesake of this whole uh, series, is the Flux. Flux is a bit weird, isn't it? I mean, it's not the first time that the, oh, some kind of things destroying the universe, it doesn't obey the laws of time or space, and that's why it's destroying everything. Sounds a bit like either the reality virus from Edge of Reality and Time, or it actually sounds a bit like Omega in a way, with the antimatter universe coming in and just completely wrecking everything. There might be a tie into Omega with the whole division stuff, since Omega could be tied to them, but I doubt it. Overall, I think this is one of Chibnall's best scripts so far. Of course, a lot of the stuff in it we don't understand yet, and we have absolutely no idea what's going to come of it. But still, it's good to have some things set up and not everything just handed to us by a ton of exposition by the Doctor. One gripe I did sort of have was um, the constant going back and forth. You know, it was one minute we're with these people, the next minute we're with the guy from Outpost Rose. He just showed up in it. It's like they've put everything from the trailer into the first episode, except for the Cybermen and the Ood, and then just decided, yeah, we're going to do it in the next episode. So it, I think it's kind of good that they are just expanding on one thing at a time. So this was Carvinista's episode, and the next one's going to be the Suntarans, and then after that maybe the Weeping Angels or the Cybermen, or that guy from Outpost Rose, which is a nice reference. Also another reference, uh, Nitro 9. That was pretty cool to see. And I heard someone say that Yaz is acting a bit like Ace. Yeah, I'd agree with that. They are taking on a more Ace kind of role where they're more involved, more physically active than last series and the series before where they did absolutely bugger all. <laughs> um, just one of the three expositions. Also, the Doctor used their Sonic for quite a lot of stuff. Yeah, they they didn't use it as much, but Chibnall certainly loves you saying to the Doctor, yeah, just use your Sonic as much as possible. Sonic this, Sonic that. Sonic the Flux, why don't you? But yeah, uh, that's all from me. Uh, that was really enjoyable. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I, at the end of the series, I'll probably do a full review of the series. I know I've been saying this for the past few things, I'll do a full review of it. I will eventually get round to them. You know, I've got stuff on, but... Of course, this is always in the back of my mind. I will get it finished. So thanks for watching and bye.